Hey guys, Dr. Andre Pineset here. PremedProductivity.com is the website if you did not know. And tonight I got my Lakers scrub cap on in case you guys didn't recognize Lonzo Ball in the house. Big baller brand, okay? <laughs> I'm excited for Lakers come back. All right, so tonight I'm giving you five tips or strategies for picking a mentor or advisor. And for a lot of you guys, this is a tough thing. You don't know what you should be looking for, who you need, what they need to know, how many you need, all these things. So I think this is a great topic to cover, especially since a lot of the emails I get from you guys, a lot of the comments I get from you guys is all this confusion in your life. And much of that confusion, I don't know if you're in this boat, but you feel like you, you get people who say they know what they're talking about and they give you advice, and then you find someone else who says they know what they're talking about and they give you completely different advice. And so what you're left doing is zigzagging back and forth in your career, not really heading towards the focused goal. And uh, I think Sophocles said it best when he said, the worst enemy is bad advice. The worst enemy is bad advice. And some of you guys are allowing the worst enemy into your life every single day. So I'm gonna give you five tips or strategies to help you pick the proper mentors and advisors to take you where you wanna go and get into medical school. So tip number one, guys, is make sure your advisor has the appropriate experience and credentials to be able to advise you. And when I say credentials, I don't care about degrees, I don't care about certifications, I don't care about all that stuff. What I care about in terms of credentials is a track record of helping other people. So you shouldn't be their first mentee. You shouldn't be the first person they're advising. I know people have to start somewhere, but you don't want your career to be in the hands of a first timer. So you want someone who's a veteran, who's experienced, who's engaged in the process and knows what they're doing. So you want someone who's gonna be engaged with you, who's gonna be with you there through the battle and actually cares about seeing students succeed. Because sometimes people, right, if you pester someone enough, someone will say they'll be your advisor, but then they'll just give you terrible advice if they haven't spent the time and invested in you. So take the time and make sure that people who talk to you know what they're doing. And the number one kind of pitfall that students fall into is picking a medical student as their mentor or their advisor. And this is awful strategy, guys, because a lot of times these medical students haven't been away from the process long enough to actually have developed a stable of mentees, to have people they've advised before, and so they don't know the process. Their sample size is one. They got themselves into medical school, and they may not know what the one thing or two things or what the strategy was to creating their application other than, oh, I had a 4.0 and a perfect MCAT score. So you want people who are familiar with the process and can advise you effectively. So that's the number one tip is make sure that you vet the person and, hey, have you done this before? What's your success rate? Uh, you know, and focus in to make sure they can give you quality advice. Tip number two, all right? Make sure that the person you choose to be your advisor or your mentor, they have the self-confidence to say, I don't know. And you guys see me, I'm super confident on here, I'm the expert at everything, right? But there are times where I don't know everything. And I don't just tell my students, oh, well, uh, and spout off some general, general answer. And you guys know what I'm talking about, right? When you know when someone's kind of fudging, because you'll ask them the question of like, uh, uh, and it seems like they're making stuff up as they're talking, right? It's like they're vamping the answer instead of giving you a clear, concrete, concise answer. So if you're using too many words, odds are they don't know what they're talking about. And so what I want you guys to do is make sure you pick advisors that are confident enough to say, you know what, I actually don't know that. And even more, you want to pick someone who's in a position that they can put you in touch with the right people. And so for me, I advise pre-meds, I advise nursing students, I advise PA students, I advise dental students, I advise all these different groups. And I don't necessarily have all the answers all the time. But the reason I'm a great advisor for these students is because I can get the answer. And so, for example, one of my PA students this year had a question about a particular school and the process. Like, oh, I don't know about that school. I'm not familiar. So I made a phone call to a colleague of mine who's on an admissions committee for a PA school. And I said, hey, do you know someone at this school? And they passed me through. And I was able to get the direct information from the source to help this student out. So you want someone who's going to be confident enough to say, listen, I don't know. But... Let me get you to someone who does know, and they're gonna connect you with that person to build you up. So that's number two. The third thing here is that the most important thing you can do to protect yourself right, from all this stuff is to have more than one advisor. And so one of the first things I tell students who work with me is yes, it's great you have me, but you need to have a group, right, a brain trust of people around you who can advise you on a variety of topics and are there for different purposes. And for example, I could be someone's pre-med advisor and support advisor, all those types of things, 
But if you don't have access to me, you need to have someone who's an expert in the admissions process because that's going to be your central person who helps you focus and choose between different things you're doing to get you to your goal. The second person you probably want to have is someone who's well-versed in the research space. Because if you're in a research project, it's nice to have someone advising you on how to be successful in that research area. The third person you want to have in your corner is a physician. So maybe they're not really great with the admissions process, but they understand what it is to be a doctor and they can advise you on the clinical aspects and give you that nice letter of recommendation of going the clinical pathway. The fourth person I think you should always have is someone who can help you academically. So someone who's there for you and can troubleshoot and see what's going wrong with your studying and help you sharpen things up. I can be that guy. Okay, I can be that guy. Um, the fifth person you should have, and this is probably the most important person you have, is someone who's not there to judge you, but can support you and can be that shoulder to cry on when you need someone. Because we all go through times, especially in pre-med, right? It's a hard route. We all go through times where we feel, right, hopeless. We feel desperate. We feel destitute we feel all these things and we feel like we can't get to our goal and so having someone there to pick you up by the suspenders when you're feeling down will be extremely crucial so a big stable of multiple mentors multiple advisors with different knowledge bases and different purposes in your life is tremendous okay uh the fourth thing is and i kind of touched on this in the third thing is within your group right we're gonna have multiple people but everyone should have different expertises and they can overlap a little bit, but you wanna make sure that you cover all the things you're gonna need in your life. And I just mentioned those things, but make sure your mentors are varied. You don't wanna have five doctors who know nothing about the process of getting into medical school who aren't gonna be able to help you there. So variable mentors and advisors, different skill sets. And the fifth and final thing, uh, I guess I kinda lied to you, I said the, the most important thing you can do to protect yourself is get a group of advisors. That's the second most important thing. The most important thing you can do is become your own advisor and your own expert. Okay? I have become an expert in admissions, I have become a, an expert in studying, only because I've had to become my own expert because I couldn't go out there and find the resources I need from people, so I had to go out and find the actual information myself. And so through years, I have become an expert in these things, but it all came from the goal of being able to say, listen, I either can't find the, the person who has this advice, or I do find some of these people, but I'm not really sure what I'm getting. And so I wanted to be my own expert so I could be my own compass, my own guide, and I could really test what people were telling me against what sounded true to me based on the facts. So I advise you to become an expert in your area. It's not hard to do, right? Stay not on necessarily YouTube, stay on blogs, stay in different places, stay in books actually. If someone's written a book on the subject, it tends to be that the book isn't get published unless it's somewhat well put together. So read a sampling of books, not one book, read five books on a subject and you will become more expert in that. Right? And then as you get advice, always sound it off yourself, sound it off other people, and always reference it. Right, Get into the literature and see, well, is it right? They said I should apply here with my stats. Does that make sense? And vet it for yourself. So that's how you can be, how you can create a circle around you of quality mentors and advisors by following those five steps. If you didn't hear them, if you can't remember them, let's run them back again. Number one right, is make your advisor, make sure they have the appropriate experience to advise you. Number two is make sure they have the self-confidence to tell you what they don't know and that they'll put you in touch with someone who does know. Number three is get a group of advisors, right? Multiple people. Four is make those people have different skill sets and different expertise so they can advise you in all different aspects of your life. And then number five is become your own expert, your own advisor, your own mentor. Pep yourself up, right? Be there for yourself. And that's how you're going to get to medical school. All right. If you guys are interested in more mentorship, more advisement, and you want to meet with me, please get over to my website, check out premedproductivity.com, go to the coaching tab, and you can sign up to work with me and have me be your mentor, your advisor, and be there for whatever you need. As always, have a great day. www.premedproductivity.com. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe, click that bell so you get notifications when I go live every Wednesday at 6.30, and follow me on social media at Dominate Premed. Check the box below for links to my website and my amazing courses that will change your life. So thank you guys for tuning in. I'll check you later.